Let's model this clamp for the Blender Challenge tools and I'm providing this image for you if you want to model against it. It's always nice to have something that we can use to model against. It makes it easier for us. All right, so I've brought in the reference image and I've scaled it. I went S3 and I just moved it so my 3D cursor is right down here and I moved it back a little bit in the line. I'm looking from the front and I'm gonna start by bringing in a plane going to edit mode and scaling it down like this it's gonna have a look at this for how far it comes out and sort of compare it to this so that's not too bad right there so I might go with that so let's take here let's take and eh, let's take the whole thing actually and let's shift D and duplicate it and bring it up to the top like that okay and then we'll take the back here and there and we'll just press F to make a face so we have the general the general shape of this thing all right so we've got that let's give this some thickness with solidify and i'll look from the front again and we'll start giving this some thickness i'll turn on even thickness and sort of uh just guess at the approximate size of that uh if we get a little indentation let's just uh, recalculate outside and that's probably an okay thickness for this so I'll go ahead and apply this and I'm going to come in and drop an edge loop right there and right there and we'll do one right in the middle and let's create that gap by going in and control B and pull until we get this let's have a look at that all right so now we're going to let's get rid of some faces here get rid of those faces and get rid of these faces so we have that now we'll just rebuild this in edge selection I'll do that and grab these ones and this is not quite straight so I'm going to shift alt and click all the way around that and I'm going to scale Z zero Sorry, scale Y zero. And that'll straighten that out. Let's continue to put faces on this. And down here, F to make a face. And let's straighten this out. So I'm just holding Shift and Alt and clicking and getting everything S Y zero. So we have this. I'm going to turn on the cavity shader now. And let's give this some beveling here. Select this edge and this edge. This one, the, the vertical ones, that one. That one and this one. And let's control B and pull. And roll the mouse up and just come like this. I can press C for clamp and I can pull it till it hits there and let's see how that looks ah oh, that's gonna be probably okay so let's go in and m merge by distance and we have this so far okay let's round these edges here so shift alt and click get it all the way around shift alt and click so it goes under as well same thing for down here shift alt and click shift alt and click Control b and pull and I like to have one, two, three, total of five in there, just to make it nice and nice and round. Okay, we're going to round. Let's let's do these ones in here. Just uh, select that edge and that edge, and down here, in the high side here, this one and this one, and Control B and pull, and give it as much rounding as you like. And then we're going to come around and we're going to select everything that we can. You can hold down control and each time you hold down control, it'll go all the, all the way to where you click. So it's a faster way of getting everything. Shift alt to click there. And then I'll start on the top. Just make sure we're getting that edge. Hold down control and just sort of inch along the model here. All right. I just want to double check that I've got here and here and here 
and we'll just see if we got everything we'll hope all right let's go ahead and control b pull you probably don't need five you could probably get away with three edges there let's have a look at that and see hopefully i haven't missed anything we can try shade smooth and then we can come over and put on weighted normal and normals auto smooth and this is this is what we have okay um i guess i didn't bevel this edge here strangely enough so i'm going to come all the way around yeah, okay yeah we didn't do everything yet uh, we didn't do everything yet so let's get all of this stuff okay so the whole outer edge control b pull and that's better all right so there's the clamp body if that's what it's called and now we'll work on something up here. Uh, if I needed to, I suppose I could go in and grab this and pull it up a little bit more to match the diagram. If that was important to us. And how are we down here? Pull it down a little bit more. It doesn't really matter that much, but okay. So yeah, let's do let's do that top part. So the 3D cursor is right there. That's fine. Let's bring in a, a, a circle. You could go for 16, I suppose, at the minimum, really. Okay, so we get something like this. Um, it's gonna be uh, actually it's bigger than that isn't it okay oh uh, yeah okay in wireframe we'll scale it out to here press e to extrude and come up e to extrude and come in so it's gonna fit through the hole we can fix that if it doesn't e to extrude come up and uh, let's have a look right now and so whether that fits, let's take the whole thing and actually pull it back. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, we'll select there. And we'll press E to extrude and come out. E and up. And we'll just have to close it off. Three for face selection and put in a few segments there. And we'll close that off. And we'll bevel that. We'll also need to bevel this top part here. We can shade smooth. We'll probably need to throw in a couple more edge loops. Let's just focus just on that thing. And we'll bevel this edge as well. And then we'll throw an edge loop up and down. And here coming in and here coming in. Let's just take that and uh, recalculate outside, just make sure. And I mean, if you want, you can do control one to make it smoother. I think I will do that. And let's see if I do a control one on this. You know, if I do a control one for a subdivision, it, it looks a little nicer. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to do another one down here. All right, so let's bring in another circle. We'll stay with the 16. And work on this part okay I'm gonna extrude down E and S will come in E come down to here extrude down to here and scale it out we'll extrude down to here and let's just think about this for a second um, I'm going to just leave an edge loop there for now and then extrude all the way down to here and then I'll extrude down to here and I'll scale it out down to here and down to the end and I'll scale it in a little bit like that Okay, let's close this off. I have to make a face. And we're going to do some beveling. 
So I'm going to select actually both of these edges and control B. I really only need three edges in there. So there's two, three, and I'll bevel this control B. And I know I'm going to need edge loops here. So I'll just drag one in and I'll drag one down. And I know I'm going to need an edge loop under here like that. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to bevel both of these just a little bit like that. I know I'll need an edge loop here and uh, I probably need another one down there, but we'll see. And let's close that off and bevel that like that. So let's shade smooth. I won't put control one on this uh, because we can do that thread. So at first what we're going to do, let's see where does the thread go all the way up to there pretty much so so it's going to be all throughout this area here all right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to roll my mouse up a bunch of times control r maybe like that many times it is you know high poly control b and pull like this and then e and alt s and push to come out with that still selected i mean i can leave it like that or i'm going to control plus I'll do that. I'm going to look from the front, and then I'm going to come over here with that selected, and the, sh and the uh, shear tool, and I'm going to pull up or down. I'm just going to pull like that, just to angle it a little bit. Okay. I'm going to try merging my distance, just to see, and we'll come back up here, and we get that effect. And I think that what I had done up here was I just decided that... Uh, I would put uh, a little indentation here, sort of mark, say that's the end of the thread part. So I'll grab these and we'll, we'll uh, bevel that there. Okay, we're going to do that. So let's just take one of these. Uh, so I hope we could, this will be round and it'll be smooth enough, I guess with a subdivision. Uh, Shift D, let's uh, rotate Y90 and uh, just drag it out and P to break it out. So we have that, scale it down and just position it. And then E to extrude, pull it over to here. And then F to make a face, F to make a face. And we'll take both of those faces and we'll just bevel it off like that, one or two and shade smooth that's going to be fine for that part and we just need like a washer of some sort there and to do that we can take a circle from here we could take this shifty pull it down and let's look in wireframe let's let's break it out and i just want it larger something like that down and extrude it up Something like that. So let's take that and alt and recalculate it outside. Take these edges and bevel them. Just with three is probably okay. And I probably would want a subdivision. And I may make that a little thicker to make it a little bit more pronounced. So we got that there. Got that. What am I missing? Maybe a little indentation in the top of that. I don't know, just for another detail. You just inset a little bit, pull it down, bring an edge loop into here, select this face and I to inset to do that. And we now have that. And that is about it. You can put a subdivision of one on this if you want and it does make it look a little bit better and if i take this and hide this let's see what the statistics are it's twenty two thousand. i mean it's a pretty small tool or prop to have that much if you were having that in a scene but i'll do it like this because it's a sort of just a standalone model for me and then at this point you could take these pieces and if you want you know you can pull it up to do different things you can rotate this in the Z all right and you have your clamp
and then you can take these pieces here and you can slide it back if you want to if you want to line that up you know you have the ability to to do that and you also have the ability to put a, a washer and a bolt through here you know if you need to attach this to another piece of wood or another surface or something along that line okay so that is the clamp right there and we'll move on next time i'm going to do a propane torch and move to the end of the uh, blender challenge tools challenge thanks very much